Please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. Here are two names guaranteed to stop a conversation. Satan and Jesus. Maybe because many don't want one or the other to be real. Or maybe it's because we know they are both very real. And we should think about them more than we do. For Mark, it seems Jesus and Satan are not only very real, they are constantly paired with each other. Every time Jesus performs miraculous healing or drawing crowds with his teaching, Satan comes onto the scene. In the passage from Mark we hear for this Sunday, Satan has come into the picture with Jesus while Jesus is having a disagreement with his best friend. Jesus is teaching the disciples. He's laying it out there, the kind of Messiah he is. A Messiah who angers and threatens the status quo. A Messiah who so offends the religious and governing authorities, who makes those in power so defensive that it can only lead to his suffering and ultimately to his being killed by them. Mark adds, and he said this all quite openly. This doesn't sit well with Peter. Peter pulls Jesus aside and tells Jesus to stop talking like that. Peter gets mad at him, criticizes Jesus, rebukes him, Mark says. Jesus responds, get behind me, Satan. Now, if we had only come to this passage um, now, we'd think that Jesus is rebuking Peter in return, shutting him up with a harsh put-down. But we're coming in the middle of the story of Jesus teaching his disciples. Jesus has been here before. It all started when he was baptized in the River Jordan. Upon hearing the voice, you are my beloved child, with you I am well pleased, confirmed, affirmed, solid in his identity as God's beloved son, he spends the next 40 days encountering and fighting Satan. This is what those 40 days in the wilderness taught him to know himself and to know Satan. And now, Satan is in the voice of his best friend. The same voice of the same friend who has declared him the Christ, the Son of God is the voice telling him to stop that suffering and dying talk. Telling him, Jesus, that he's wrong about the kind of Messiah he is. That he's wrong to think of himself like that. And especially wrong to be so open about it. When has Satan come into the voice of your best friend? Jesus and Satan. They both bring out our fears and anxieties. Jesus is the way of love, and the way of love is threatening. The way of love takes us to places of vulnerability. The way of love takes us out of our constructed ego structures that keep us feeling in control and safe. The way of love is disruptive. 
It can call us out of our systems of security. The way of love calls us back to our authentic selves. Jesus is the way of love. And the way of love makes evil rise to the surface and react with cunning and violence. This is what he was teaching Peter and the others. Jesus isn't saying the only way to be a Messiah is to suffer and die at the hands of the secular and religious authorities. And so the only way to follow him and be good is to suffer and die on a cross. No, what he's saying is that teaching and healing and paying attention to the marginalized and the poor and the outcast and the needy and the sick is to continue to, to continue to be led by God's love in the world will lead to suffering. Jesus knows who he is. Jesus knows how Satan works. Satan isn't Darth Vader exactly. Satan is the voice in our heads, our ego desire for fleeing or fighting. Satan is that impulse in us to hoard, to fear, to constrict. Satan is that deeply ingrained message in us that keeps us from claiming the spirit within us, that holds the grudge, keeps the anger stoked. Satan is the need to be right. Satan is that thing in us that causes us to go along with what our friends are saying to us, even when we know it's wrong or inaccurate. Jesus and Satan. Lent is the time for us to start the conversation, at least within ourselves and with our God. To practice Christianity is to claim your identity as a child of God and go deep into that, to live from it. It's to allow the force of God's love repairing, redeeming, and creating to use you to work through you, and for you to be listening to that as your truth. And to claim your identity as a child of God is to know it just makes people uncomfortable. It can make us uncomfortable. Self-doubt. It makes our family and friends, society, nervous for us. And if we listen to them, little seeds of self-doubt, anxiety, am I crazy? Am I wrong? Creep in. And we can be immobilized. We, could, we quit listening to the divine things. Out of fear, we'll lose the human things. Being the child of God and following the way of love doesn't guarantee being understood and appreciated by others, even your best friends and family. Because you're no longer seeking affirmation from others, you're seeking mercy and justice for others. Because you're no longer wanting security for yourself, but wanting God's truth. Jesus' way of love will get a response. Most times, it will stop a conversation. Sometimes, it will cause our best friend to quit listening to us and rebuke us out of their projections. And the temptation is to let our anxiety and fear shut us down. We have these 40 days of the examine 
to get to know ourselves and to know our Satan. This is the conversation. The examine begins. Start with water. Remember your baptism and give thanks. You are God's beloved child. This is your true self. Now, write down a description of your true self. Just between you and God. Go. Stand out in the sun. Close your eyes. Feel its warmth on your skin. Pray for the light to let you see your true self. Stand in it. Take a deep breath in and out. Inviting the spirit to renew you and remind you to live from your truth today. Take a moment. Find God. Stop. Be still. Quit thinking, which is usually judging self and others. Just be. Feel a relaxing. Feel a warmth. That is God with you. Saying, I love you. Hold on to a cross. Ask forgiveness. I'm sorry. I've gotten caught up in the voices of others. I have let human ego determine me. I have let the reaction of others keep me from acting as your child. I haven't listened to divine things. Open your eyes. Look up at the clouds, the sky. Look ahead with hopefulness. You are God's beloved. The Spirit of God is within, and you know this. You've located it. It's going to be okay. Jesus is in front of you, leading you in the way of his love.